Hi, Andreas from Tottle here. So today I was working on adding a new feature to Tottle. I wanted to be able to right-click on one of these uh, items in the uh, project menu and then duplicate, copy, um, copy to clipboard, et cetera, et cetera. Delete, rename, all those things, right? Um, and the thing is we do actually have a right-click menu or context menu on our left panel here, but that was built very specific for that purpose and it wasn't designed in a way to make it reusable. So I thought today I would start by making a reusable context menu component and I thought that might actually be an interesting video. I'm gonna start by creating a new component and calling it context menu. There we go. And so the idea of this component is that you wrap an element in it. So you put something inside the context menu and then it'll handle the whole right click thing and it'll also handle showing a little menu when it should, right? Um, and the way we're going to achieve that today is we're going to use slots. And uh, you might not have worked with slots yet if you're a little bit new to Toddle, but the basic component is to say, uh, the basic idea is to saying slots sort of define where child elements of this components are being rendered. So if I, for example, take this slot, um, I can then go to uh, a component here and add in context menu. Um, and if I put a, like a paragraph in here, right, inside the context menu, this paragraph is actually going to be rendered inside the slot. So I can put uh, elements around it, above, below, whatever I want to do, but the slot sort of says where would children actually be rendered inside this component, right? And it allows you to use components in a sort of composable way, we, we generally call it, with saying like put this component, put that inside of this, right? And it makes them very flexible. So uh, this is what we call the default slot. So if you don't give it a name, that's where things go if you uh, just put them in as children. But you can actually name slots as well. So I'm going to go and add uh, two more menu elements here. I'm going to add a div, and then I'm going to add another div inside of that. But the inner one, I'm going to actually change its tag name to menu. Uh, no, menu. There we go. So menus are a... Um, are a valid HTML tag, and it basically works the same way as a list. Um, the browser will treat them exactly the same way. But the benefit is that it makes it a lot easier to read your HTML. You understand what it is quite like semantically, right? Um, so inside this menu, I'm going to add a, another slot. Um, so now I actually have two slots. And in this case, that means that if I put stuff in, they'll be rendered twice. And I don't want that. So I'm going to give this the name of menu. No, nope, I really can't spell menu. Menu. Um, and so what this means is that now, uh, well, maybe actually let's style this a little bit. We're going to put uh, first the div here, the outer div, is sort of intended as an overlay. Um, so it's going to cover the whole screen. I'm going to make it position fixed. Uh, set uh, my left and top to zero pixels and width and height to 100 pixels. So basically I'm saying take up the whole screen and then I'm also going to add a set index of 50. And that's just being saying, make sure it sort of sits very far forward on the screen, right? So if there are other things that are position fixed to absolute, um, you probably want them behind for this. This is a high priority, right? Right, and then the menu, I'm going to add uh, a background color. Um, I'm going to add a border radius um, of, I think, 8 pixels. Actually, maybe let's just inside this add a, uh, we'll add some list items. Um, I don't actually want the UL element because the menu serves the same purpose in this case, right? And so the idea is that these are right now just placeholders inside the slot. When you actually use this menu, you would put different list items in because depending on what you're using this for, right, obviously it would be different items you want to click on. They will do different actions when you click them. They will look different, et cetera, right? Uh, let's just clear out this background color. Uh, and the same here. So this is my menu with my items in, right? Uh, let's also maybe just make it uh, 200 pixels. How's that? That's a bit better, right? Um, this one should actually also be position fixed, uh, but actually setting the, uh, 
but we're going to set the top and, and left in a slightly different way. Uh, maybe the last thing, let's add a box shadow. Uh, um, give it a, there we are. Right. Um, so now I've got my uh, menu here. Now you can sort of see if I go back to this sort of test component, right? You can see I'm adding the, the P in here, but if I add, a, I can add a secondary paragraph um, and then tell this in my attributes that you should be in the menu slot. Then all of a sudden that'll fit inside the menu slot, right? So that's taking, that's replacing all those default elements inside. Um, obviously I don't want a paragraph. I'm going to want some items when I actually use it, but sort of showing this idea that the way you can use the different name slot is going to say this element goes into the default, this goes into the name slot, etc. Right? Good. Um, so the last thing I want to do is I need to add some interaction here, right? Because obviously this bit shouldn't actually be shown most of the time. Um, it should only really be shown once you right click on whatever. So let's add an element in here. Like it will add a default button in uh, for good measure. And again. Anything we add inside the slot is just like default or placeholders. So they're really nice when you're developing, but when you're actually using this component, you will override it with something else, right? Um, so the way I want this to work, normally if we're doing like a pop-up or modal, we would just have like a variable saying show or whatever to sort of say toggling something on and off. But in this case, I also want to capture where we were clicking. So I can show the context menu at the right spot. Um, and instead of trying to have two variables that essentially sort of capture the same kind of information, I'm just going to use one, and I'm going to call it uh, position with a capital D. And I'm going to start it out with a value of null. And null is sort of a value that means empty, right? It means there's no value here, right? Um, and it's a nice way when you're using something like position, saying either there are two values, actually a left and a top value, or there's no values, and if there are no values, then don't show it, right? So now we can go and say on this div, uh, show hide, and then we can say position, and then it disappears because it starts as null, right? On the context menu, I'm then gonna add a context menu event, which is essentially right click, right? But there are, depending on your platform, sometimes different ways you can get context menus out, right? And I wanna start by prevent default, and um, what that does is that um, it basically tells the browser to not do whatever it was going to do in terms of like showing this menu, right? I just want to add, uh, you might see when we're working inside the total projects that there are sometimes duplicate names for things, etc. There's a lot of like legacy actions in this project that don't exist in total. Uh, like when, when, when you would use it, right? So don't be too confused about the fact that there are sometimes more different types of actions available uh, in these kind of videos. Um, so here we're saying prevent default, again, to not trigger the actual uh, right-click menu. And then I'm going to set my position variable. And I want to create an object that has a left property. And I'm going to set that to my events page x. So that is the X, actually, I can just use X. They actually reference the same thing in this case. So I'm going to use the events X property, which is the difference on the X axis. So I want to rename it left and top because I think that's a little bit more intuitive. But in the browser event, this is called X. So it's the distance from the left side of the screen. And I'm going to add one and say top. And that's going to be my browser's Y, right? So whenever I right-click anywhere inside this context menu, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna save the position of the mouse where I right-clicked, so I can use that to sort of decide where to show the menu in in a second, right? Um, and here, let's just quickly, for good measure, say with fit content, uh, and that's basically saying however big that. Um, the content was supposed to be, like the content decides to be, that's how big this menu should fit. And in this case, the content only means the button or whatever's inside the slot because this is position fixed and therefore does not affect the size of 
the context menu, right? So it just means that it, you don't have like, you can't right click like out here and get like a right click menu for a button you weren't actually right clicking on, right? Good. Um, so let's go and try that. I say test and if I right click, we can see that menu pops up, right? Uh, obviously not in the right position yet. And also I want, if you click here on the overlay, it should go away, right? So we're gonna add a click event to our overlay. We don't need to prevent default because there are no default action for clicking on a div. Uh, so we're just gonna set position to null, uh, which is basically resetting it back, right? So now if we go into test mode and click here, we can see it goes away. If I click anywhere else, nothing happens. If I click on this, I get my list item and I can clear it outside. I can actually also clear it by clicking on it. And that uh, actually is the way right click menus work, right? So if I go and say, uh, uh, whatever I can do here, take screenshot, um, the menu goes away, right? So whatever action you pick in there, you also do want it to go away. You just want to trigger that first. So that actually works the way we it should, right? Um, good. And then the last thing we want to do is actually position the menu in the right spot. So the way we do that in Toddle is we can use a style attribute to overwrite any styling, right? Um, so I'm going to add a attribute here called style. And I can define that with a formula, which allows me to set the specific pixels offset of, um, of this element, right? Um, but by doing so, I do have to write essentially the CSS out for it, right? So it works exactly like a style attribute in HTML does, right? It's a, that is exactly one-to-one -one what it does. Um, and I'm going to use concatenate to build up this style string that I need to do. And I'm going to say left colon. Uh, and then I'm going to put my position... And since this is null now, let's just go back and actually trigger this uh, so we have some data to work with. I'm going to click right click. Um, and then we go back to the menu, right? So now that I actually triggered it, now the variable has a value and it's a lot nicer to work with formulas when there are values uh, to see, right? Going to add pixels at the end, px, um, a semicolon, and then height, colon, uh, and the position, wait, no, not height. That doesn't make any sense. It's called top, top, colon, right? Uh, 27, and we'll add another pixels and a semicolon, right? So we end up with the string here on the right saying left 100 pixels, top 27 pixels, because that was the position. And as we did that, you could see the menu sort of moved to where we clicked initially, right? Um, so using the style attribute lets us do fully dynamic styling, if you will. Like basically, you can define properties based on a uh, on a formula, right? So let's go and test this. If I click anywhere on the element, it's going to pop up exactly there. And um, if I click outside or inside, it's going to go away again, right? Good, let's go and test that out on uh, my component. I'm gonna add in here a list. And uh, I don't need the, um, list item. We'll just add two of them in here and get rid of the UL. Um, item one, yes, item two. And I'm just going to make sure both of these are in the menu slot. And here we are going to say, I think we'll just move the heading inside and cut the paragraph out, right? So now if I right click my heading, I get my item one and item two, right? So you can see this component now is reusable anywhere inside of, of Toddle because I can grab anything in a context menu and I can put whatever items I want inside. So whether it's for uh, for my new right-click menu in the project sidebar or whether it's replacing the... Um, here we go. Whether it's replacing this one, um, it's going to... it's I can reuse the same component. I don't need to rebuild that logic again and again and again. And the slots in the component allowed me to build it in a way that made it very easy to reuse. 
So I hope that was uh, at least an interesting uh, video to watch and understanding a bit more both about how we use components, but also how we actually build Total. Thank you very much for watching, and remember to subscribe uh, to watch these videos as they come out. Thank you.